In November of 1931, not long before the start of practices, Kokato High School girls basketball was canceled with no explanation as to why. This is the history of the Kokato High School girls basketball team before the game was taken away. Initially in Kokato, girls basketball preceded the boys. As a result, most girls in the community had never seen a basketball game, let alone knew how to play in one. This did not stop them. In 1903, a group of determined girls formed Kokato's first basketball team, raising money for the uniforms and equipment. By March 26, 1904, the girls practiced enough to challenge Dassel. The game was held upstairs at Stevenson's Hall, and the noise was deafening as the girls were cheered on by their classmates. Kokato's starters included Mathilda Love, Monica Kiebring, Julia Larson, Agnes Swanson, and Clara Osterberg. Given there were five players per team, it is likely the girls played full court. When the final whistle blew, Kokato was victorious. After the game, both teams were treated to luncheons, and afterwards, Kokato players hosted dassels at their homes which at the time was a proper sports etiquette. A few weeks later, the Kokato girls traveled to Dassel for a return game. After the game, the Kokato girls had to wait 15 years to play again. New superintendent N.N. Stevenson started the girls basketball program again in 1918, firmly believing girls got just as much out of sports as boys. Unfortunately, due to the Spanish influenza epidemic that year, the girls wouldn't play again until the following year and the 1919 season was also cut short with the loss of Stevenson Hall. By the fall of 1921, the popularity of girls basketball surged as half the girls in Kokato School tried out for the team. This included Mildred Olson, who would one day become Kokato girls' most prolific scorer. An added bonus, Superintendent Ernest Jake Jacobson was also a huge fan of girls basketball, a game which looked a lot different than when the girls originally took the court. The new overall rules of the girls basketball team tended to vary from school to school. Kokato primarily played a six player half court game with a three dremel limit. The game itself was no etiquette contest. Officials had to watch for fouls which included kicking, shouldering, tackling, and hair pulling. Girls hustled on the court, revealing females could also perform with strength and speed. In regards to uniforms, girls wore black bloomers with midi blouses an almost risky wardrobe in a time where girls were required to wear long skirts in school or out in society. The 1920-1921 season was a success, with the Kokato girls winning half their games. By the 1922-1923 season, the Athletic Association, formerly a boys club, became officially co-ed. Girls games were well attended, with large numbers of the community coming out, even in negative 25 below zero weather, to support the team. By the end of the season, the girls had won six games in a row, finishing second in the county. Star forward Mildred Nelson scored double points at every contest. By the end of the 1923-1924 season, senior Mildred Johnny Olson set her all-time record of 49 points in a game against Howard Lake. Although that season Kokato lost in the Wright County Championship, they still won 15-17 games that season. For the next two seasons, Kokato lost every game consecutively, even though they had strong players like Anna Nimala, Amy Anderson, and Ruby Johnson. By 1927, the girls swapped their bloomers for shorts, a detail that fueled the newspaper to comment on the girls' good looks, something reporters never commented on when discussing the boys' team. Another monumental change was the unveiling of Kokato School's new auditorium. The main event of the celebration was a basketball doubleheader against Dassel. The girls' team was up first, pulling off a 48-11 victory against Dassel, their first win in two years, and the first of only two wins that season. The 1928-1929 Kokato team shattered their previous three years losing streak with an undefeated season. As the athletes faced off for the Wright County Championship against the Endia Powerhouse on February 15, 1929, the whole town was wild with anticipation. Storefronts even closed at 2 p.m. that day, so staff could make it to the game. The girls did not disappoint, coming back from behind to tie the game with five seconds left. As Kokato was unbeaten and Annadale had one loss that season, officials awarded the trophy to Kokato. 
The following season produced mixed results and a record of four wins and seven losses. The biggest loss of the year came when avid girls athletic supporter Superintendent Ernest Jake Jacobson left the Cocado schools. With the loss of their biggest fan, the Cocado girls basketball team survived only one more season, achieving a 500 record at its end. Although the girls were never told why their basketball program was canceled, one can speculate that the damaging nationwide rumor of athletics being detrimental to a young girl's health played a role in the demise of the sport. Soon after Cocado snatched away its program from the girls, the neighboring communities of Dassel, Howard Lake, and Buffalo followed suit. And it wasn't until 41 years later that Cocado girls played the game of basketball for their school.